what's up guys, my name is Isaiah Hill and today I'm going to be doing a review of one of my favorite movies to watch around Halloween. I have been doing a lot of horror movies and Halloween type themed movies and I'm really excited to talk about this one. This one's part of a family fun collection, two great films for one great price. And these two films I'm going to be doing, reviewing the other one, I'll get to the first one in a, like later. And the first film up that I'm going to be reviewing today is Monster House and the other film is Hotel Transylvania. Uh, Monster House stars Mitchell Musso, Spencer Locke, Sam Lerner, Steve Buscemi, and he's in both of these because he's really, like, com it's, like, really common for him to be, like, with Adam Sandler. Uh, Nick Cannon, Maggie Janelle, Kevin James, Jason Lee, Catherine O'Hara, Catherine Turner, Fred Willard, and even John Heater. And this is an interesting film. It was, if you can see it, it says... Uh, Robert Zemeckis and Steven Spielberg present. That's right. They, this is by like the same people who worked on Back to the Future. Bumpkin. I don't know why I thought Bob Gale was in this. And it's directed by Gil Keen. Uh, Gil Keen. Did I say his name? I, I know I said it twice, but just to be sure. But this is a really uh, fun film. I really enjoyed this film. I enjoyed this film when I was a little kid. Um, in this this film, like, it's about a boy. Who is spying on his neighbor and is mayor? No, not mayor. Neighbor. Jeez, I'm tongue tied today. He start. He spies on his neighbor and he takes toys of kids. He takes toys from kids that end up on his lawn. And when he ends up dead, the house all of a sudden becomes alive. <clears throat> and it's about a boy and his friend and someone else that they meet. And what's really interesting about this is the motion capture. Now. Bob Zemeckis, well, I usually call him Bob, but Robert Zemeckis will do that. He is known for using motion capture in films like Polar Express, Mars Needs Mom, and A Christmas Carol. Just name three. Um, Polar Express, I think, per was the best. This is pretty good, too, but I like uh, Polar Express more. Uh, Monster House Will Follow, then A Christmas Carol, and then Ma Mars Needs Mom. Now, I'm going to talk about those in a sec. Polar Express was a film that I grew up watching. Uh, be sure to check out a review on that. I am definitely doing that. Monster House, I really like because the characters, like, it feels like they're, actu they're actually, like, genuinely reacting. A Christmas Carol, the motion capture gets a little bit too frightening and a little bit too disturbing, while Marcy's mom just looks awful. And I'm actually uh, playing a game right now that heavily uh, had cutting-edge, like, facial animations along with motion capture. So, the interesting thing here that I want to talk about is Monster House, it was released in 2006, this film is uh, enjoyed by many, and this film is dark. Like, and I mean, this is pretty dark for a kid's movie. Uh, it's, the and this was like one of the main criticisms, and it's also been criticized for like a Harry Potter-like type character system, which I can see, like, uh, Mitchell Musso's character, his name's DJ, Sam Lerner's character's name is Chowder, and uh, Spencer Locke's character is named uh, uh, Jenny. And Steve Buscemi's uh, character is named Mr. Nevercracker. And Nevercracker is portrayed as this mean old man. Until you until you find out what's going on in his life. Uh, Nevercracker, he is just old. He's bitter. He's not a happy man. Uh, he is all alone. He lives in this two-story house that even looks kind of frightening. I mean, just look at this house. I mean, jeez. Uh, Mitchell, Mitchell Musa, if you, know, if you do not know who he is, he's from Hannah Montana. And he even is the voice of Jeremy from Phineas and Ferb. Uh, I unfortunately not know about the other two, so I'm sorry. But Catherine O'Hare, she is uh, in Home Alone. Steve Buscemi, uh, Hotel Transylvania, and then a lot of Adam Sandler's movies. It's kind of like a trademark of Sandler's. And he's a pretty good actor. And my favorite of his is Boardwalk Empire. I highly recommend that show. And John Heater, uh, John, Napoleon Dynamite's in this. And John Heater has a, had a hard time finding work after Napoleon Dynamite. And I actually feel kind of bad for him. Then you get, like, all sorts of, like, characters. It works. This film has a great cast, great chemistry, great everything. Now the house is a character. And it's kind of like a Stephen King-type scenario. Because, like I mentioned before, Stephen King basically uses, <clears throat> like, a hotel, a house, or just, like, a anything. Like, it's a character. But the setting is, like... All around. Like uh, someone told me uh, for it, Dairy is actually a character while Maine is the setting. And it and I can kind of see that. 
But the thing to point out with Monster House is it is dark. It is pretty scary. I remember watching this like when I was six years old. I'm like, whoa, that is pretty scary. Now, it didn't bother me because I grew up watching like Gremlins, Ghostbusters, like all sorts of like those films. And they were pretty uh, dark for kids. And, but here, like, supposedly in the original script, everyone dies. A lot of people die in the script. But then they actually had to bring them back so they can get a PG rating. Now, this is by Imagine Movers, uh, Robert Zemeckis' company, have, like I said, uh, focus on uh, motion capture. And the thing is, what I like really, wait, who did the music? Douglas Pipes, that's who it is. Douglas Pipes' score is just amazing. It's kind of eerie, it's kind of scary, but and it kind of has like a whimsical feel. It's almost like a Danny Elfman type score. When the film opens up, you see like a lot of like the town. You can see that they worked hard on this. The film like went through like like a lot. Like and they tried, they tried to make this look good. But like back to like uh, the Harry Potter thing, like what's going on with the Marys and why this is often compared to Harry Potter is because like the three character system that it has. You got the really smart girl Hermione. You got the dumb guy pretty much so Ron and you got like the brave boy who is the leader so Harry and this in this case will be DJ and it was all things compared to that I never saw it as that I saw it as just like kids like that this like DJ and Chowder are, are like best friends Jenny comes along one day and they save her life this film kind of feels like it needs to have more recognition because I remember this film coming out and kids were talking about it they were having fun about it kids were like oh yeah I just saw a monster house it was scary it was pretty cool but when I saw it I was like it wasn't so much scary as it was a little bit just weird uh weird is not a term that I like to use so much to describe films because it feels like that you can describe any film with that title and but the thing is like with monster house it has like a feeling like of where you're just like oh wait what like it's kind of like you look back and it's like something that you almost do not want to do interesting thing to note about this film is other than the motion capture the script the script is amazing like the whole idea of a house coming to life is it's an often like thing like what haunted houses but here's like i can't think of another of like source like where a house comes to life other than uh the shining like with the book uh, spoilers for the book. Sorry, guys. But the thing is, like, a lot of people look at this film like, ooh, man, that's too dark. See? And I like to compare this film actually to Jumanji, uh, the original Robin Williams one, because it was deemed, like, really dark. Critics said, oh, it was too dark for kids. Robin Williams even went on record saying he would not let his kids watch it. I remember watching this, and it, and when I got the DVD when I was, like, a kid, it had came, like, with a 3D book. And it was pretty cool. I liked it. And the thing is, what I didn't like so much about... There, I only have one complaint with this movie. And I feel like some of the facial animations are, like, a little bit slow. Like, and it's, like, a little bit... And at times, it'll be, like, quick. So, it's, like, off and on. Because, like, one minute, they'll be, like... To being... To being like that. And it's, like, so quick. But then again, I like how this film uses color. Like, it uses, like, very dark, like, colors. Like, one minute, like, you're staring at something, like, very bright, but then it just turns dark. You're staring at something that's very br uh, dark, then it turns bright. But then when you get, like, complete darkness, the film is like, yeah, you're you're stuck. This film is, like, uh, I read, like, a theory somewhere, like, this was all really, a, like, a dream that DJ had. Like, um, that's the character's name. Like, where he was spying on Nevercracker, and it was, like... Where he stole toys. The film has like a lot of like background. Like with this. And I really like it how they cover it. There was supposed to be like sequels. But I'm like a sequel won't work. In my opinion like. The first film is just good on it's own. But a lot of people want sequels. Because they love the chemistry between the three characters. And you get like a sad. A very happy ending. Films that have happy endings. They can typically be good or they can be bad. Uh, Mr. Nevercracker like. <clears throat> like steals toys but at the end spoiler he gives them back and you find out later i'm trying to like, spoil the film too much but the thing is with this film like it really shows heart and that's why i like what like with some kids films like especially today they lack that i believe like take something like little rascals little rascals is like a film that 
has a lot of heart. It's trying everything it can. It wants to show you, like, oh, yeah, we're trying to be as good as can be. We are trying to be innocent. We are working hard to make sure, like, that you love this. We love these kids. We don't want to see anything bad happen to them. People don't want to see bad things happen to kids are, like, really messed, like, it's scary. It's messed up. Someone uh, pointed out, like, Harry Potter, kids are often in peril, but no one really cares. Yes, they do. Harry Potter and Monster House, they both have kids that are in peril, and you're so worried about them because you've grown attached to them. DJ, I have a feeling, like, he can't, he's the one you attach to the most. Chowder's meant more for comic relief, and Jenny's meant to be, like, that straight person. DJ's, like, that guy who's adventurous, he's curious, he's, like, oh, yeah, I observe these things. Jenny's, like, oh, yeah, I know these things. Chowder's, like, What's going on? That's how it works. Uh, John Heater plays like a really like uh, he plays like a video game nerd, and he's just like obsessed like with video games. I like, did a point like where Chowder says he uh, played the entire game for like for like four days straight, like on one quarter a quart gallon of chocolate milk and an adult diaper. And I'm like, oh my god, dude, really? <laughs> but overall, I highly recommend this film. Monster House, I'm going to give an amazing. I really enjoyed this film. I watched it every Halloween. I watch it every time when I can get the chance. Because I really love this film. This film has a lot of heart. It trot, and it keeps up with the Halloween spirits. Uh, and it really only takes place over the course of two days. And that's pretty interesting for how the film looks. Like, the film starts early morning the next day. Then it goes to late on Halloween night. And I'm like, Wow. It's so good, and it works. This film has a lot of heart. It tries, like, really hard. And, it, and like, when you ever, you, like, watch it again, it, le it makes you happy, in my opinion. I really like this film. A lot of people I know like it. Some people find it a little bit too disturbing for their kids, and I can understand that. But overall, guys, if you want to watch, like, a good Halloween movie that will be, like, appropriate for, like, let's say 10-year-olds, I highly recommend Monster House. That's it, guys. Uh, thank you so much for checking out the video. If you guys enjoyed the video, leave a like. If you guys wish to see more videos like this or my Let's Plays, by all means, subscribe. If you guys want to um, like share this with your friends and family, by all means, go ahead. If you guys want to ask or request something, by all means, comment down below. My name is Isaiah Hill, and I really enjoy making these videos. Thank you guys so much for taking time out of your day to watch it. Hope you guys are having an amazing day, and I am signing off. Bye, guys.